Assalamualaikum and good morning. Today, you will be learn about Chapter 3, Visualizing Data. So, we look at the content in Chapter 3. We have six subtopics in Chapter 3. The first one is Data Organization and Frequency Distribution. Then, we have Histogram, Frequency Polygon and OGIF. 3.3 Stem and Leaf Plot. 3.4 Box Plot. 3.5 other types of graph for qualitative data and the last one graphical summary using Microsoft Excel. So the overview organizing and graphing data for quantitative data. Okay, so here for quantitative data, which is numerical data, we can present our data by using first one frequency distribution here. Okay, this is the first one. And then, we can present also in histogram. Frequency polygon. Or GIF. Stem and leaf plot. And the last one is a box plot. Well, for the qualitative data, okay, you can present your data first by using frequency distribution. Okay. Second one by using pie chart, Pareto chart, bar chart, and contingency table. So we go one by one here. First one, we look at 3.1, data organization and frequency distribution. Okay, we look at frequency distribution for quantitative data first. Okay. When you look at the table here, so we have ungrouped data and second one is the group data. Okay, so ungrouped data, data are given as individual points. You look at the column here, television set. So we have only one value here, individual point, only one point. But for the group data, okay, when you look at the columns of exam score okay so look at the first row 90 to 99 okay so data are given in interval so that is the difference between ungrouped data and group data okay so we look at here frequency distribution for ungrouped data and group data so which type is more desirable so the group data is more desirable because it reduces the complexity of the data and help to smoothen out irregularities in the distribution. Okay, so example 3.1. Okay, so we have the data here. Okay, heights of statistics students. Okay, so the last digit of those height are listed below. So we have uh, how many data here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 times 4 is 36. So we have 36 data. Okay. So we want to um, convert all the data into the frequency distribution. Okay. So here we do the by looking at the solution here, okay, the last digit, so we have individual points. So this one is a ungroup data, okay, because individual point here, okay, okay. Uh, then, okay, do the first row is the last digit, so we look at the data, so we have number zero until the highest one is number 9 okay so that's why we put 0 1 2 3 until 9 and then the frequency so we count okay count the number 0 here okay 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so that's why the frequency equal to 8 okay do until the last one and make sure the total of frequency here must be equal to 36 because we have 36 data. 
Okay. For group data, okay, it's a little bit uh, complex, okay, because we have step by step here, okay. For group data, so we have six steps, okay. The first one, you need to determine the number of classes using the Sturge formula. So what is the formula? The formula is 1 plus 3.322 times log n okay this is equal to k okay so if you get k equal to 1.2 you must round up okay it become 2 okay round up okay after that after you get k you must calculate the class width okay by using this formula okay so same to the k you must round up okay the class width. For example, your class width is 7.3. So, it become 8. Okay. So, number 3. Okay. So, choose either minimum data value or a convenient value below the minimum data value as the first lower class limits or class boundaries. Okay. We set the minimum data. Okay. Either you uh, take from the data or you set below the minimum data. Okay. So then, using the first lower class limit and the class width, list the other lower class limit. Okay. And list the lower class limits in the vertical column and then enter the upper class limit. The last one, take each individual data value and put a tally mark in the appropriate class. And the tally marks to find the total frequency for each class. Okay, we look at the example. So we have 40 students, okay, marks, okay, in an examination. Okay, first step, you need to calculate K, okay, by using the formula. So because of our N, the total data equal to 40. So that's why, log. 40 okay base 10 by using calculator okay then we get 7 this one after round up okay then find the class width by using the formula so maximum minus minimum divide by this is k then you get 8 okay after round up then we set the class boundaries and the frequency here so you must have two columns. The first one is class boundaries. The second one is a fre frequency. For the class boundaries, we set 31, the minimum data. Okay. Can you see the data here? What is the minimum number in this data? As we can see here, the minimum data, okay, is a 33, right? Okay. But, we set the class boundaries, okay. So, the first data, we put 31, which is lower than 38, okay. And, the class boundaries, okay, the width, class width should be 8, okay, should be 8. So, that's why 31, so x is uh, greater than or equal to 31 until less than 38, it can also represent as 31 until 38. So, we have 8 class boundaries here. Okay. Then, second one, start with 39 until 46. 47 until 54. 55 until 62. 62, sorry, 63 until 70. 71 until 78 and the last one 78 until 86 okay make sure all the data are included in the class interval the class boundaries okay so the maximum here is 85 right so the maximum here is 85 so the last 
class boundaries is 78 until 86. So included, okay, in the last class. Okay, then we stop. Then calculate the frequency. So how many data included in the first group? 31 until 38. So we count it. So 31 until 38. So 1, 2, so, is there any data between 31 until 38? Okay. So, no. Only 2. Right. So, our frequency equal to 2. Okay. So, make sure total frequency here should be equal to 40. Okay, so next we go to qualitative data. Okay, qualitative data is very simple. Okay, we just take the group here. So we have my V, Beza, Viva, Asia, and Alza. So we have five groups. Okay, and then just calculate the frequency of each group. Then we go to 3.2. Okay. So, histogram, frequency, polygon, and or give. Okay, this one, okay, I give you the notes, okay, the example and also the solution, okay. You need to discuss among with your group, okay, because after this, you need to do group assignment, okay. You need to study this, okay, and discuss among your members group so I just go through um, in general okay because I want you to study and discuss later okay so organizing and graphing group data so we have three okay to organize and graphing so we can use histogram frequency polygon or, or gif okay so look at this one so histogram so for x axis we use class boundaries. Y axis, we use frequency. But for the frequency polygon, X axis, we use midpoint. Y axis, we use frequency. And the last one, or give X axis, we use upper class boundaries. Y axis, cumulative frequency. Okay. So look at the shape of distribution here. So, before this, on chapter 2, we have discussed the shape of distribution, okay, by looking at the values of mean, median, and mode, okay. So, this is the left skewed, okay, the right skewed, and symmetrical, okay. But, we have a lot of shape of distribution here, okay. You look at the first one, uniform. Okay, uniform. So, it looks like a rectangle. Okay, that is a uniform. Then, when you see the shape of U, that one is a U shape. It looks like U. Okay. And if you see the two peak here, okay, up and down and up again and down. So, this is by model. Okay. Number four is a G shape. It's a look like a J. And if you reverse the J, it become a reverse J shape. Okay. So, we have additional. So, five additional shape here. You need to know. Okay. So, the rest. Example 3.4 for histogram. Okay. So, we give you the solution as well. Then, we have a frequency polygon. And also, the last one is all give. So, as I mentioned before, you need to study this, okay? Discuss among your friends in your groups. Later, you will do this in your assignment, okay? So, that's all for part 1, chapter 3. See you on uh, next part, okay? Uh, part 2. So, thank you.